guys welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna to be doing a postpartum and baby update I'm almost three weeks postpartum so I'm just gonna kind of be going through how everything's been going and getting down to you know even the not so pretty details so hopefully you guys enjoy this video and if you're interested in seeing how I'm doing almost three weeks postpartum and how my little baby is doing just go ahead and keep on watching so the first thing, because I'm actually putting makeup on right now, so it kind of goes with what we're doing here, but it's crazy. My whole pregnancy, I did not break out at all, and there were definitely pretty much the whole pregnancy, but definitely the last couple of months. I would probably just remove my makeup and then throw some moisturizer on. I wouldn't even cleanse my skin I know I, I know better I do but you know when you're pregnant sometimes you do some crazy things so I was definitely not taking care of my skin and my skin was totally fine it wasn't it wasn't super glowy or it wasn't like really great skin but I didn't break out I didn't have any breakouts literally two weeks postpartum I was still doing the same keep in mind postpartum I wasn't doing my skincare regimen step by step every night and I started breaking out so I've gotten especially like right here it could be hormonal too but I mean when you're pregnant you're hormonal too and I wasn't getting breakouts so I don't know so I want to start off by answering some questions that like on I asked all over my social medias like if anyone wanted to know or had any questions on anything postpartum so as far as my weight goes two days before I gave birth I was a hundred and 93 pounds yeah I am five feet tall so just put that into perspective right now I am 169 pounds so I hit 173 like pretty much 20 pounds I lost the first 20 pounds in the first two weeks and I was already weighing one like 173 so to me that was crazy I wasn't dieting I wasn't walking a lot I wasn't doing anything I was literally taking care of my kids and eating whatever whenever because when especially when you first start breastfeeding you're starving I was skipping more meals than I was when I was pregnant just because of you know I'd be feeding the baby and then by the time I was like done or she was fussy or I would make the kids food and I would just pick out the kids leftovers and you know just trying to figure out a schedule right now is a little bit overwhelming so I don't know if that has anything to do with it but yeah and obviously I wasn't working out or anything or I'm not working out right now the first week was probably the worst week I would say like week and a half that I was very sore so just my groin was sore my abs were sore um I was just sore all over like from the waist down <laughs> so I was definitely taking it easy I was taking ibuprofen and I was taking a little pill for my high blood pressure. So I did go on Monday, the Monday after I gave birth. So I gave birth on Thursday. And then on Monday, I went to see my OB. And well, actually, I just went to the doctor's office. And they did a blood pressure check. And my blood pressure wasn't extremely high. But it was still like on the higher side. So they prescribed me um, take that pill twice a day and then for two weeks and then for me to go back after that and get it checked again and actually talk to my doctor and all that stuff. So I'm hoping that now that I've lost the weight because I feel like the weight that I gained definitely contributed to me getting my blood pressure that high. So that's how the blood pressure thing ended up too because I know if you watch my labor and delivery story or my um, birth story videos I mentioned the high blood pressure thing also within those first two weeks my swelling went down so at about two weeks my swelling was totally gone I didn't have a lot of swelling in my feet or like my legs but I I was swollen I remember with my first pregnancy I got super swollen um just keep in mind that as kind of not like a natural thing for you to get swollen when you're pregnant but also it matters how much IV fluids you get while you're in the hospital. I think I was only on an IV for five hours or so and then just contributed to the, the swelling I had already from just being pregnant. I was still a little swollen, but now my feet are like totally back to normal. I'm almost three weeks postpartum, so that's nice, you know, because now I can fit into my shoes and my sandals and all that. Also the first like week, 
for sure the first week i want to say maybe five days oh my gosh i was getting so much cramping um if you breastfeed you're going to get i think i think you get them anyways but i think when you breastfeed you get them a little worse because when you the baby eats and your nipples are stimulated your uterus contracts which is good because it causes your stomach to go down like the swelling in your stomach and your uterus to shrink back to normal so that's the good thing is that it's not just for nothing but oh my gosh like i can't remember if this is how it was with the other girls my other two pregnancies because Ugh, I was telling Ramses, I'm like, I did not remember the cramping being that bad with the other girls. It was painful. It was like having those like little, the beginning contractions again. Probably after the first week, I was good. Also, I did not tear. So it was really nice that I did not tear. I, I got an episiotomy with my first daughter and I tore with my second daughter. So I got stitches both times. I feel like I definitely bounced back a little bit quicker this time because I didn't tear. I didn't have to like really take care of my area down there as delicately as like when you get stitches, you know? It's kind of like when you get stitches, you're like afraid to like touch yourself down there and like properly clean yourself. I know at least I was, so that helped me this time around. And as far as the bleeding went, Oh my gosh, that first like day uh, after I had her and they massage your fundus, it was so painful. They get all the blood clots like out of your uterus that way and it, they help, you know, kind of shrink your, your uterus back. I remember that was so painful because they would like push down and then like massage like that. I mean, it wasn't like massage, it was like really really painful so that hurt but I feel like that helped me a lot because I didn't have too bad of bleeding so I did wear the like depends like kind of diapers they're just a lot easier so you don't have to worry about having a pad and an underwear and when you pull them up at the same time you know you have to adjust and all that so they're just a little more convenient so I used those I want to say for about four days or so maybe like five days and then after that I just wore them at night but then at about the one week mark I started just wearing pads like the kind of wider pads they weren't really like thick ones I could like get away with using the just like wider ones and then I would say at about the two week mark, I was wearing just panty liners with just regular underwear. And then now that I'm a little bit over two weeks, I'm almost three weeks, I am not wearing anything anymore. I do still have some spotting when I go pee and I wipe, but like it's not where it's actually getting on my underwear or anything like that. Sorry if the lighting is changing because I'm just using natural lighting with my window. And then I did use a faja, or I am using a faja, but in the beginning I tried using it probably two days postpartum and it barely fit me, like I was still really swollen. But then I took like a little break from it for a few days so I didn't start wearing it daily until I was about a week uh, postpartum and then I started using it. Uh, so I will typically put it on like in the morning or a little bit like at lunchtime or so and keep it on for a few hours until I'm just like ready to take it off. You know, it gets a little annoying after a while. And the one I got works really well. I like that it's three pieces, but it does, it's on the cheaper side. So it does like fold and like kind of like mold after a while, like if you wear it a handful of times. And also I wear it on top of a shirt. So like I have an undershirt and then I'll wear it on top of that because when you wear it and it's not like like I said it's more of on the cheaper side so the material is a little cheaper so it's not super soft or anything so against your skin it will start kind of like hurting because it presses up against your skin kind of thing and I definitely feel like it helped and it really helps you with your posture too because you're so used to being like this when you're pregnant and you have a lot of weight in your midsection it makes you remember that you have abs and that you can flex your abs because when you're pregnant you know when you don't need to flex your abs it's uncomfortable and weird to like flex your abs or suck in your stomach i am breastfeeding uh, my milk came in like 24 hours after i had her so that first 24 hours i just had like colostrum and she was cluster feeding the number one 
tip that I have for people. If you're trying to breastfeed, feed that baby. Just feed the baby. That's really what's going to make a lot of your milk come in is her or him. Definitely the first like week or so, you don't really want to pump unless you have to. I definitely have to pump. I get a freaking ton of milk. Yeah, I get a lot of milk. So I definitely have to pump like in the morning as soon as I wake up right after I feed her. I can definitely pump and then feed her because right now, you know, they don't, as newborns, they don't really drink that much. So I definitely have enough. So it just depends. Right now, she's not on any sort of schedule or anything like that. I'll go into that in a second once I like kind of update you guys on her. I did make a whole video talking about breastfeeding and my recommendations on like products and just kind of my experience like kind of tips and tricks and stuff on breastfeeding this was while I was pregnant but just as far as this baby goes as far as Mavis goes and how we're doing with breastfeeding it's going very similar to how my other two kids went I'm getting a lot of milk I'm having to pump uh, she's latching really well we are co-sleeping ish so it's a little easier when you breastfeed and you co-sleep yeah breastfeeding is going really well so kind of going back to my weight i am 169 like i said without doing anything that puts me two pounds away from the weight that i was before i got pregnant so before i got pregnant i was still trying to lose my baby weight i was literally trying to lose like at least 10 pounds 10 15 pounds and i was struggling to do that even though i was going to the gym i was i definitely saw a difference in my body shape and stuff but i wasn't like actually losing weight like the number on the scale was not moving for me so i'm just kind of back to where i was before right before i got pregnant so that's nice i mean <laughs> that's uh and I'm, I'm not even six weeks postpartum yet i'm pretty much i feel like i'm pretty much ready to start working out but obviously i'm not going to do anything drastic i definitely want to start walking and i want to start stretching especially for my sciatic nerve i am planning on calling my chiropractor or my physical therapist physical therapist I don't know what's the difference i used to have sciatic nerve problems prior to having kids it got really bad at one point uh, about like two years ago I, yeah i would say like two years ago and i had to go to get a steroid shot and i ended up having to go get physical therapy and it turns out that the reason i was getting such sad, bad sciatic nerve pain was because my hips were three inches um apart like from each other so like one hip was three inches like higher than the other hip so i was like overcompensating for one side so my sciatic nerve was being triggered because of that so i ended up getting like realigned and then i did a few appointments and then i ended up just ordering one of those tens units and a heating pad and i started doing it on my own once it went away and i was good i was still doing the sciatic nerve uh pain stretches even though i wouldn't feel the pain so every day when i would go to the gym i would still do the stretches and it kept my sciatic nerve pain away when i got pregnant it came back so obviously there's a lot of pressure and movement and all that in your hip pelvic area so i'm assuming like i still have slight sciatic nerve pain and i still feel that my sciatic nerve is like irritated but it's not how it was when i was pregnant so I tried doing some of the stretches like a week, a week and a half postpartum and no, 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 everything was still kind of loose down there, like my ligaments and stuff and I started doing it and I started getting like pain and I was, I just, I could barely get up off the floor so I was like, no, 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 okay, I'm just gonna wait on that. So I did do a couple of stretches like a couple of days ago and now I'm almost three weeks postpartum so it felt a lot better. I actually told Ramses today, I said, I need to uh, call my physical therapist and see if I can get an appointment for once I'm six weeks postpartum, once I'm cleared. Just in case I need to get realigned, they can do that for me and then I can start doing my own stretches and everything once I start working out again and all that. Honestly, I'm so, I'm, I'm looking forward to working out again. I'm so excited to get back on my little gym schedule and lifting weights again it was just so fun for me just 
doing it it made me feel really good to be active that's what really kept me going when i wasn't really losing weight was just how it made me feel so i'm looking forward to that for sure um mental health having three amber asked um, about my mental health so she was saying having three littles 24 7 is tough things you do for self-care honestly doing my makeup and just telling her i'm just like you know what i'm gonna go upstairs i'm gonna go get ready i'm gonna go take a shower i'm gonna put some makeup on even if i don't i don't do all of this you know i don't put any eyeshadow on or lashes or anything I'm just throwing some makeup on and feeling a little more put together definitely helps my mood if i'm just in the shittiest clothes and i'm in the same clothes for the past three days but i did my makeup i will feel a lot better okay i did my eyebrows really quick but also a big thing about mental health and the postpartum process and stuff i have found that talking about how you're feeling with your partner with your mom with your best friend whoever and just kind of being honest and I'm, I'm cleaning my hair that really helps me that makes me feel better um especially talking with like other moms or other you know kind of like no um it makes me feel not as guilty sometimes if you need a break just say you need a break even if you want to go get a coffee it's only going to take you like 15 minutes you just need to go sing some songs in your car and not hear mommy 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 for 15 minutes then you know that's that's what you should do. The mom guilt is definitely real for me with my older kids. It's, I don't know if I'm like, I know I'm not the only one, but it's kind of like once I had Mavis and I felt like I was just, you know, feeding her, doing everything for her. Uh, and the girls, you know, they didn't say anything. Like they weren't being different. They actually love her and like really want to help me do a lot. Like I have to tell them, please go away for a little bit. Like I don't need your help right now they're a little too helpful sometimes so it wasn't that i was seeing a behavior change in them but it was just me like i was feeling like oh maybe you know i need to read more with them i need to do more i need to you know make them feel like things are the same you know even though things were the same um i didn't want i wanted to do more i want i felt like i wasn't doing enough when i'm here 24 7 i homeschool them cook them three meals a day give them snacks answer all their questions you know like I I and then you think about it and you're like shit I do a lot so it's just kind of like it's okay okay I did my eyebrows really quick but also a big thing about mental health and the postpartum process and stuff I have found that talking about how you're feeling with your partner with your mom with your best friend whoever and just kind of being honest and I'm, I'm cleaning my hair that really helps me that makes me feel better especially talking with like other moms or other you know kind of like now it makes me feel not as guilty sometimes if you need a break just say you need a break even if you want to go get a coffee and it's only going to take you like 15 minutes you just need to go sing some songs in your car not hear mommy 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 for 15 minutes then you know that's that's what you should do the mom guilt is definitely real for me with my older kids but it's kind of like once i had mavis and i felt like i was just you know feeding her doing everything for her uh and the girls you know they didn't say anything like they weren't being different they actually love her and like really want to help me do a lot like i have to tell them please go away for a little bit like I don't need your help right now they're a little too helpful sometimes so it wasn't that i was seeing a behavior change in them but it was just me like i was feeling like oh maybe you know i need to read more with them i need to do more i wanted to do more i want i felt like i wasn't doing enough when i'm here 24 7 i homeschool them cook them three meals a day give them snacks answer all their questions you know and then you think about it and you're like shit i do a lot it's okay to have those feelings but talk about them with someone and just kind of realize that they're just feelings that are normal but that sometimes they can be irrational and once you talk to someone and they kind of tell you no oh, you're 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 doing great especially if you have a partner that knows you i feel like a lot of times i'm so distracted and i am feeling a little overwhelmed but i'm like oh i'm fine i just need to do this this and this and ramses will literally stop me and be like hey like do you want to go like 
do, put your makeup on you want to go like get a coffee or something like do you need a break like are you good like he'll literally has to be like are you okay like are you good you know do you, and I'm like and then all sometimes it'll make me realize like no I'm not good right now you know even if you just go to your room and lock yourself in your room for an hour like right now I'm locked myself in here it, I'm not it's not locked but you know what I mean it really helps you know you don't need a whole lavish weekend away you don't need the kids to go spend the night at grandma's house you know all the time yeah that's nice but you don't need anything over the top lavish to have a little mental health break you know so that's definitely what works for me even if it's after the kids go to bed I feel like a lot of time that's where my mental health comes in. I feel like good because they're asleep and the baby's asleep and me and Rams can watch something, talk. You know, uh, car rides for us are pretty nice. We like to just like all pile in the car, go get a coffee, just kind of drive around. The baby actually likes the car. So, and also for self care, I need to take care of my skin again. So I need to start doing my masks and like all that again. But also my nails, I'm going to go get my nails done next week. Um, I took my powder off of my real nails so all of my real nails broke off because they're weak AF. So I'm going to go get acrylics again for a little while, get my toes done and all that. Ramses actually was telling me all weekend like go get your nails done, go get and it just wasn't a good time. It was he had worked at 12 the day before and I was just doing other things. So a lot of the time I'm like no I don't want to like I if you follow me on Instagram like I've talked about this on there but that I hate going and getting my nails done like I do I hate spending like two hours in there I, I don't know why I just don't like it so yeah but I'm definitely gonna go next week that also is something that makes me feel good after I do it I don't like going and like spending a lot of time in there but it does make me feel good having my nails done and my toes done so just take some time once a week once a day whatever and you know just do something that you don't have to do do something that's not an obligation because you do a lot of things all day as moms that you have to do you know and as far as the baby goes she's weighing 9.7 pounds she's like you know what 16 days old she was born at 8.1 she was 8.1 pounds and then uh four days later at her doctor's appointment she was 7.5 so she had lost a little bit of weight which is normal and then a week later after that she was 8.2 she had gained the weight back from her original weight when she was born and plus an ounce and now she's 9.7 so another almost a week tomorrow it'll be a week from the appointment that she was 8.2 so then she'll be 9 point she was 9.7 today so yeah, she's gaining weight. She's drinking lots of milk. She's really chill. She reminds me a lot of Charlotte when she was a baby. She stays really well in her little playpen, her little bassinet thing that we have. Like I'll feed her, I'll change her feeder and like lay her down in there. And she stays asleep for a good two hours at least. And then again, she'll wake up and we'll change her kind of thing. So sometimes she'll take a three, four hour nap once she cluster feeds like that every, if she's cluster feeding like every hour, which she'll do at either at night or in the morning, she'll cluster feed like every hour she'll be eating and then she'll take a really long like four hour nap. So a lot of times when I'm like pulling my hair out, sometimes I'm like, girl, what is wrong with you? Why are you eating so much? And I'll be like, oh, it's okay. Like right now she'll chill out. She'll have a good little nap. As far as me goes my milk once it came in it's like full force so right now I have to pump every morning and like every night so twice a day so sometimes if I don't pump in the morning I have to pump like at lunchtime and then especially right before bed because I will wake up like really engorged I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and have to pump I've had to do that a few times so yeah definitely have been keeping up with that I think the most I've gotten in a bottle I at least get four ounces from each food like each time at least and then uh, the other day I got seven ounces from my left side and I got four I got like five ounces I think from my other side so yeah I'm getting lots of milk I have a, a good stash already not doing anything specific not drinking anything specific just drinking a lot of water so during the day we do have to have the TV on or, or noise on because if like let's say the girls are in another room playing and I'm listening to something on the AirPod on the, and then on the iPad like that's happened before and then she'll start getting fussy and then I'll like 
nurse her, I'll lay her down, and then she'll still be fussy, and then I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, it's because it's quiet in here. Like, I don't realize it's quiet in there. So that's what I've been trying to do is, like, during the day to just keep it normal. Everyone talk normally, and she still sleeps just so that she knows it's during the day and she doesn't get confused. Also, the first two nights, like, the we had her at almost 3 in the morning, so that first, like, day, like, night-ish day, whatever you want to call it, um, it's kind of hectic because once you have the baby, an hour after you have the baby, uh, they come in and they do their shots and they do the, put the solution on their eyes and all that stuff. And then after that, they will eat and just kind of like sleep and eat and cluster feed. So she was cluster feeding a lot. I didn't really sleep too much the first like 48 hours just because of the way my birth happened and everything that night. She also like was a little fussy. She was kind of, I feel like she was kind of trying to figure out what was going on. She's like, okay, I'm in a new place. What's happening? So she was cluster feeding all night too. So I was waking up a lot. Um, and then we came home the next day. And then also that night she was uh, kind of crying for everything. Like when we would change her diaper, she would cry. When we would uh, swaddle her she would cry when I would try to latch her on she would cry like she was just kind of crying for everything unless she was sleeping or like latched and eating she wasn't crying so I remember thinking like oh my gosh like she's such a cry baby like I don't remember the girls being like like crying so much that when they were that little so so yeah definitely the first like two nights were the roughest and then after that like it was totally fine she doesn't cry anymore when we change her diaper she sleeps you know every two to three hours she wakes up she eats she poops she goes back to sleep like she's really good she doesn't cry anymore like I said she likes car rides but she just doesn't like when the car stops like if we go to a drive-thru and we're stopped she will literally cry her head off so we have to just keep moving or have to keep giving her the pacifier and stuff we are giving her the pacifier. She's not like too, too like attached to it. She definitely likes nursing a lot more. We are swaddling her. So she is swaddled like every time she sleeps, but I have noticed that she likes to stretch her, her arms out and stuff. So I have been letting her not be swaddled. Sometimes if she's like really tired and I know she's really gonna like sleep, I try to just leave her out of the swaddle. The girls are obsessed with her. Like I literally have to like, like get away shoo she's like you're gonna make her cry because they will they want to kiss her all the time they want to hold her all the time they want to like just they're always in her face and like Betty calls her Zuzu I don't know why no Diddy calls her Zazu like the bird in the Lion King she said she called her Zazu I don't know I don't know why oh and yes we are cloth diapering so we didn't cloth diaper like the first week or so uh we waited until her umbilical cord fell off because the newborn diapers are just a little smaller. We didn't want it to like irritate her umbilical cord, but her umbilical cord fell off on the fifth day. It was five days old. I went to change her diaper. I lifted her onesie to like just move it out of the way and it flew, the, the piece of her umbilical cord flew off, but we still had obviously like some diapers left. So we just waited until the uh, newborn diapers were all gone. And then we started with the cloth diapers and it's been going pretty well. We need to right now, since when they're newborns, they pee and poop a lot more than when they're older. So we're changing her diaper a lot more than we will like later on when she's a little bit older. So we are washing diapers like every other day. <laughs> every two days throw in a load and honestly it's been really easy I did the first load like on my own and then Ramses did the second one I was really surprised I was like oh you're gonna do this like yeah I was like okay so he <laughs> he did the second load on his own and it was really easy you don't even need like a full day for them to be dry they dry really quickly uh, I hang dry them but I dry the inserts like the the microfiber inserts in the dryer but yeah, that's been pretty, it's been pretty easy, honestly. And we throw the wipes in there with them, obviously. So it's like the wipes, the insert, and then the outer part. 
All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I didn't forget anything. And if I did and you have any other questions, just leave them down in the comments and I will respond. If you guys are new here, go ahead and look through my channel. I have lots of other mommy makeup stuff, lots of different things on my channel. Just go ahead and browse through my channel, see if there's anything you guys are interested in. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.